Hello, welcome back to the Cricket Nerds. Me and Benji back again talking about the third test of the Ashes between England and Australia in which England have clawed one back. So it's now 2-1 Australia um, with two tests left to play. It's still, you know, very much an uphill battle for England at this point, but it's just got a little bit more interesting in what has been an absolutely enthralling series so far. It's um, been good. <clears throat> it needed to chase 250, or sorry, 251. Um, yeah. They got off to a pretty decent start like last night, and that's where we left things in our last podcast. But um, things swiftly took a turn for the worse when Duckett got out, and then Moeen Ali came in at three. That went exactly as well as you'd expect. Um, and then Joe Root threw his wicket away again. Oh, it was just, it was the most stressful yeah. in which, it, and it, it just shouldn't have been a stressful. It was the most, I'll tell you what it was today. It, it was the most stressful, easy chase I've ever watched. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's exactly what it was. It was It was just so stressful the whole time, but it was see, in, in, in the end quite an easy chase. Oh, I do just want to say, just prior to um, starting for real this time, I just want to comment on the dedication of the cricket nerds um, because I'm cricketing on holiday. James in the past has in a podcast from no less than Antigua on holiday. I seem to see that there's one co-host that can't seem to do it because he's on his holidays. So... <laughs> Yeah, let's just leave that one there to 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 hang for a second. Oh, but some beef in the cricket nerds, that's all I see. But anyway, I I I just I just want to let let that hang there for a second. But yeah, as you say, um, what a day of test match cricket. I I don't think I've been as nervous watching a test in years. I think I'd I tell you what, head in Lee twenty nineteen. I wasn't very nervous because when Stuart Broad got out, I'd given up on watching it and I'd been grumpy and I'd gone into the sea. And it was only Zach actually who told me uh, that that we'd won that test. But look, yeah, this morning Duckett d- didn't seem to know where his leg stump was today. I, th- I think, and just kept walking across the stumps and 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 getting out. Um, Zach Crawley yet again had a start, nearly got to fifty, and then edged it behind. Less said about that, the better. But I, I do want to talk about Monelli at three because it is, on average, in Test match cricket, it's his best position. It's where he scored his 155 not out, was from number three. So, I mean, you know what? I didn't hate the move to, to, to today. Um, James, I feel like you may have a different opinion to this, though. Yeah, so, I mean, I've I've, I've mentioned that I think Monelli is currently part of the tale. Um, and especially for the last few years, when his hunger for test match cricket has waned, he doesn't have the concentration. Um, I was watching uh, Moeen Ali bat in the first innings with my wife, and she was like, oh, he's, he's looking really good. I was like, it won't last. Trust me, it won't last. He'll lose concentration. And lo and behold, about four balls later, he went for a big old hook and went out. And it's, it's the same every time. Um, he loses concentration. And I mean, this time he was just done for pace. <laughs> he just yeah. he didn't look like he had it in the locker. But I, I don't think that'll be a permanent move. I, I think Stokes made it quite clear in the post-match press conference that that will not be a permanent fixture of Moeen Ali at number three. Um, but the person that got him out, Mitchell Stark, was an absolute hero today. Took five for 78, so relatively expensive, but five for nonetheless. And a big five wickets as well. Um, you know, Duckett, Ali, Brooke, Stokes and Bairstow. And it has been a story, this test match, of two bowlers for Australia. Mitchell Stark and Pat Cummins. They have absolutely carried that Australian bowling lineup. And to be honest, Boland and Murphy in particular looked very, very tame, very quiet. Mm very easy for the English batters to handle. Is that something to be a point of concern for Australia? That, you know, I mean, a concern that that they've got two of the best bowlers of all time in their lineup, but that, you know, the other really good bowlers aren't quite pulling their weight. 
Mm. I was worried that it might. Well, I'm not worried because I'm an England fan, but it may be of concern. Those two getting, you know, knackered towards the end of the series. Yeah, I'm not because as an England fan, it's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> um, they are definitely carrying that that attack of of of. Australia though, especially without Nathan Lyon. Like if they had Nathan Lyon, it wouldn't be much of a cause for concern because he'd be there to take their wickets. But yeah, I think what they took how many wickets between them in this test? I think um oh, yeah, yeah. Start, start took well between them they, they got six in the second innings between and them, and in the first innings they got eight. So fourteen. Fourteen out of out of seventeen wickets. Mm. <laughs> has been these two yeah yeah i think there's been yeah only a couple of yeah three wickets aside from that going to these two so they are doing the bulk of the work and they are australia's best two bowlers i think look mitch marsh even though he had a fantastic test today uh this week scoring that 118 he is not as good as a bowler as cameron green like cameron green could be a genuine opening bowler who could be part of the attack and pull his weight whereas I don't think Mitch Marsh does that as well like he's good he could bowl a few handy overs here and there but I think Green has potentially been a bit injured throughout this whole series because he just hasn't bowled the numbers that we've seen him in the past and as you say if if Cummins and Stark do tire towards the end Australia are going to be in all sorts because Scott Boland has looked um, surprisingly tame like I thought after Edgebaston like he's a player that should have always been playing in England but yeah he, he I think he took a couple of wickets at Edgebaston but England have just found a way to to play him in this test and Josh Hazelwood's not been particularly on the boil either has he I'd say like he's very much been um very also hit and miss um in the sense that he's taken a couple of handy wickets here and there but gone for runs as as well um yeah i i just think it could be a cause for concern for australia i'm not going to complain though if that happens yeah so you mentioned um a couple of australia's sort of all-rounders in mitch marsh and cameron green and both incredible players um i i would be interested to see what australia do you know going into mm. next game because mitch marsh was obviously incredible but cameron green is you know he brings a different thing to the party do you think they can fit both in that there's there's a question for the comments um but looking at england's genuine all-rounders not talking about stokes because he can't bowl i'm talking about chris wokes and mark wood mark wood had an outstanding test match he got uh oh, i'm gonna have to do some quick maths here 16 off eight and 24 off eight so he faced 16 balls and he scored 40 runs in the two innings and he took seven for 100 in the overall match. That is incredible. He was absolutely lightning. Um, and the, the fact that him and Wokes took us over the line in what was an incredibly nervy chase, it was beautiful. And it was so nice seeing Wokes cut the ball for four at Headingley with the Western Terrace all rising. Yeah, in a similar way that that Stokes did it for you. I tell you what, I was watching it here, and 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 I said, Wokes is going to hit the winning the winning runs to, to, to today. My other predictions, they weren't quite there. I was saying that uh, Johnny Bairstow, uh, that Harry Brook and Johnny Bairstow would stay around, leave ten runs to go, and then Chris Wokes would hit the winning runs. Um, I also said Harry Brook will get ninety two and then get out. So those ones were all nonsense. Um, but Chris Wokes did hit the winning runs, and Wokesy again. Just ah, oh, where has he been? I know he's been injured, and I know he thought he'd never play a test again uh, for England. But you can tell how much we've missed him, and they deserve to be our favourite cricketers. I think. I think yeah. Mark Wood today just came out and slogged. Um, and Chris Wokes played that nice, measured. Actually, he he, he looked like well, Wokes could bat three. <laughs> I'm going to say it. Wokes could bat three. Don't, um, don't I, say I, that. <laughs> I do want to fact check myself, story about Mo and Ali because I did say he batted number three to score 155. Not out. He didn't. He was batting number seven. So don't don't crucify me in the comments again for uh, 
for saying an incorrect fact. Uh, yeah, fact check here. So um, the last thing I want to talk about is Johnny Bairstow behind the stumps because we, you know, we, we mentioned in the last podcast that the difference between the two sides, well, one massive difference has been Alex Carey and Johnny Bairstow. Johnny Bairstow has not performed with the bat at all um, in the third and fourth innings since I can't remember what time frame it was. I saw a stat where it was saying that um, he's averaged like 77 when he wasn't keeping and he averaged 11 since he has been keeping. Um, it, it's been absolutely howling. And he, yeah, he's not performing with the bat and he's certainly not performing with the gloves. Will we potentially see a return of Ben Folks as a like for like um, where we've got somebody that is going to probably bat better or at least the same and certainly perform better with the gloves? Or could somebody like Ollie Robinson, the uh, the keeping Ollie Robinson from Durham, who has been in incredible form, could we see somebody like him come in who has been posting some baseball numbers? Um, I'd be interested to know. I mean, I would have said initially uh, Ollie Pope had he not been injured. Um, if we're bringing in a new keeper, I would say Ben Folks. I don't think there's any other keeper who deserves to come in apart from Folks. I don't think Ollie Robinson, great player, great bat. He's done well in the county championship this season, but I don't think his batting or his keeping warrant him to be there. Bairstow's in the side because of the summer that he had in 2022. Um, makes him undroppable. and But he's in as a batter who can keep rather than as a keeper. I think if you're taking the mindset of playing your best 11, um, and I think you mentioned this on yesterday's podcast, James, that actually Ben Folks is part of that bowling unit. You need to play your best 11 and your best keeper in the country is part of that. And I think Ben Folks is the best keeper in the country, if not the world right now. Um, he's just so skilled. And I think he's not in there because he's not as good of a bat as Johnny Bairstow. Um, even though from number seven at the minute, they're averaging very similar. Mm. Um, but yeah, if we're going to bring in an, 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 another keeper, it has to be folks. Um, it does cause a problem with selection. Because I, I I don't think Harry Brook at number three is the answer. Um, we saw that in this test match. In the first innings, he was pitiful. In the fifth, in the second innings, he was great at number five. I think we don't want to mess that up. We want to keep him at number five. I think really the solution is Joe Root's our best player. Joe, just push everyone up one. Joe Root three, Brook four, Bearstow to five. Stokes at six and then bringing folks at seven. I think that's the only way that we're going to manage to balance that side um, after reflecting on it for many, many days. Yeah, quite possibly. Um, the only issue is who you take out because Mo <laughs> is part of that bowling unit. Stokes is not. Um, and, you know, in order to <laughs> you know, play... A... Oh, I think it's for Ali Robinson. Yeah. Because because when you've got, when you've got Ali... Your three seamers in in Stuart Broad, Chris Wokes, and Mark Wood, who did the bulk of the bowling, by the way, mm. they were the three main bowlers. You've got Stokes; he's got a week to sort out his leg, so that's your fourth seamer. And then you've got two spinners in Root and 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 Moe. That's that's seven bowlers. Uh, yeah. Six bowlers, or, sorry. Or you get in Tongue instead of Ali, and get Root as the main spinner. Um, I think though if we do that I think that gives us that opens the door for us to lose that test match because um, I think we have to play a specialist spinner Um, I don't think root spin is good enough to be a frontline spinner Um, leaks too many runs I think Moen Ali bowled fantastically um, in this test match Uh, he picked up two crucial wickets of of Lavashane and Smith Um, so I think he is in as the spinner, as you know, your number eight spinner. Um, I think we lose Robinson for for Ben Folks is 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 my change. Fair enough. Let us know what you think in the comments. Um, once again, thank you so much for the continued support. We really do appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow our social medias. 
They are all in the link tree down below. And other than that, we will see you next time. Goodbye.